TG Geeks, episode 333, July 5th, 2021. A new paranormal procedural. Hello and welcome to another webcast from TGGeeks.com, where Ben and Keith, the two gay geeks, talk about all aspects of geekdom and nerdery, sci-fi, comics, film, horror, genre, you name it, we talk about it. I'm Keith Lane and we're coming to you from TG Squared Studios in Monsoonee, Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm Ben Raggington. Coming to you from, yes, the monsoon has arrived. We We're have not, we turned don't, into fish. <laughs> well, we haven't gotten the rain yet, but the humidity is definitely up. It's I haven't seen a blue sky in days now. We're breathing water. We're breathing water. Yeah, I'm expecting fish to go flopping on the sidewalk any day in Phoenix, Arizona. And let's get on with it. Prepare for hyperdrive. Meanwhile, in the Hall of Episodes, the two gay geeks are discussing this. Well, we have a guest that we've talked to a couple of times, Carrie Merrill. She has a new book that is coming out, and we're going to talk to her about that. Oh, my gosh, the, the time just flew by she when we were talking to her. It was a wonderful. delight. Yes, the yep. time flew. Just flew. Yes. And we're going to have our birthday shout outs, our featured podcast of the week. And we got some feedback and regular shout outs. We have something that I stuck in on the second segment. Oh, uh, I haven't should, looked yet. Should we have time? I haven't uh, I looked. hope we have time. And our wacky weekly recap and the regular shout out. So let's just get right to it. And we welcome back to our show, Carrie Merrill, who is an author and has written quite a number of things. And she has actually something interesting to tell us about this time. Welcome back to the show, Carrie. Thank you, guys. It's so good to talk to you guys again. It feels like it's just been forever, and I'm just know. really glad to hear your voices. Um, exactly. Maybe because it has been forever. Yeah, I mean, we haven't and we haven't seen you. I, I, I you were probably going to be at. Uh, Phoenix Comic Fan Fusion, whatever Fan Fest, whatever it is, whatever today. it is this year, <laughs> this year. whatever the name is this time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was. We missed you, and uh, you know, we just kind of miss seeing all these people that that we have talked to and and been around for quite some time. But um, for our listeners that have not heard some of your other interviews. Why don't you give us kind of a little background of who is Carrie Merrill and how did you get into writing and what you have written so far? Well, I am a writer from way back. I've written so much stuff, but not much of that stuff is published until about 2016 when I published my first book, Angel Blade, which ended up being a four-book series and has been my bestseller so far. It is a new adult paranormal adventure. It has been really my introduction in the whole publishing world. I really enjoyed writing that series. Um, I wrote those four books, and then I've written a young adult western, which is sort of this random idea that I'd had, uh, called The Key, the Outlaw, and the Treasure. And then I recently published, as of September of 2020, my newest book, uh, which is a horror thriller called Time of Death which was, again, not probably my sixth book there. And then now I just have released for my publisher that my seventh book will be coming out, hopefully later this year. Oh, cool. I, how did we miss the, the last one? I, I, don't, I don't know how we missed that. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, that was last year, so yeah, something called a lot of things last happened year. last year. Yeah, <laughs> something <laughs> called the the great pause kind of got in yeah. the way. Yeah, so right. Yeah, I I remember um, you were here. Was it 2016 or was it 2017 
when you were here. I think it was 2017. I th- yeah, it, because I think you just had Angel Blade out at that, and that point. Was, yeah, that, yeah, that was the year we met a bunch of authors. Yeah. Yes. And you were actually kitty-cornered yeah. from um, uh, Zachary Wheeler, right. who actually told us that we should... St- uh, go talk to you, and we were in a rush. And I, I stopped by your your booth, and I said, "We will come back. We want to talk to you." And we we eventually did. So, <laughs> and you probably said, "You probably said to yourself, yeah, right. I know. Everybody says that." <laughs> kind of, yeah. I kind of did actually. Well, I know you did. Everybody. We had some place we had and to then be. You guys came back, and it was it was great. It was the greatest thing. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I I remember Angel Blade, and that that was a fascinating series. I I enjoyed it tremendously. Um, what was the 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 uh, the next one was the the fish hook letter or ooh? What? Uh, it was uh, the key, the outlaw, and the treasure. Oh, but but it was it was called something else before that, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was called the Secret of the Hook Death, and right. we ended up the publisher and I we worked together. Ended up kind of revamping the title. We revamped the cover uh, and and turned it into the outlaw and treasure. It kind of gave it a little bit more information about the story. Right. And I'm proud to say we were able to change the the cover artwork from the original designer we had to something actually that I created. So oh, cool. I was pretty happy with the new cover. Yeah, you. I, I've. I've been following you on Facebook. You're rather the creative type. You've done all kinds of stuff. I mean, you were doing pottery recently, and you were doing some painting before that, weren't you? And all this, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I do all kinds of art. I started delving into digital art now. And yes, and I do wheel throwing pottery. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to like let loose any of my little creative juices wherever I can send them. Is is this because uh, of this stupid great pause that we were kind of that was kind of inflicted upon us? Because I know a lot of people really started to explore. Um, I'm not, I don't know. I want to call it hidden talents, but maybe that is the appropriate term. But they they just wanted to explore other areas of, I should put creativity, and uh, because they had nothing better to do, and the great pause kind of got in the way of their normal means of creativity. So was that sort of like a, a mean? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, I had a bit of a pause, but not much, because in my day job, of course, I am a physician. I'm an active OBGYN surgeon, and I still had to work through all that. But um, I did utilize, I learned digital art during that time. And uh, I was doing the pottery a few years before that. But another hobby I did start learning was actually rock tumbling, which is kind of a weird thing. But oh, wow. it turns out it's really fun. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm. I, I I got a rock tumbler when I was like eight or something like that. I, I haven't never really did anything. I I, but. <laughs> I I completely forgot about rock tumbling. It's like that that is a thing I'd forgotten. Yeah. Well, I haven't heard of that but since I was a kid. There's some really neat stuff that you can do with that. We have oh, a yeah, lapidary stuff is uh, is an old hobby, and oh, I yeah. don't really know much about it. And it's one of those things you can act. It gets you outside. It gets you walking and hiking and finding just great things and. So that's what I started doing back, it was about fall of last year, just before the big waves of uh, COVID hit here in Wyoming. Right. And so there wasn't a lot to do inside, but you could do it outside. So that's what I did. Yeah. And there's lots of uh, geologic stuff up there and kind of neat stuff. Oh, yeah. In in the Wyoming area, unlike here in Arizona where it's... It's all sand. (laughs) It's all sand. It's already been tumbled to death. It's it's all dirt. (laughs) It's already been tumbled. <laughs> exactly. And, and any rock you yeah, might find, it just... Really great. It's a great geologic source because we have huge fossil beds up here, which oh, I've right. learned recently came, where most of the big T-Rexes came from. Yeah. The museum museums nowadays came from Wyoming. So exactly. Like, hey, yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. I, I figured uh, Montana, Wyoming, that, that whole area... You know, of the central U.S. is just like, uh, you well, know, a, it's a mecca for fossils. Yeah, north, oh, yeah. north central, Absolutely. north central. Yes, north central, <laughs> not central central. No. <laughs> yeah, you're you're a little closer to Canada than we are. <laughs> a little bit, just a yeah. little bit, by yeah. half, I guess. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so you have something new coming out. So this this new thing, new. tell us about that. You you mentioned I am that. So, so excited so, about this. Yeah. Um, it was it was an idea that 
just sort of it came to me, and I was so excited when it came to me. Um, just to give a little bit of background and kind of what the inspiration was is um, a couple of years ago, my parents actually moved in with me because I needed to take care of them for health reasons. And so I bought a house that has like two master suites so they can have a whole space of the house and I can have a whole space. And But I, we spent a lot of time together and I started like sitting and watching television and my elderly parents love to watch true crime. <laughs> uh, they're always watching the true crime documentaries and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, this is scarier than like watching my fiction horror movies, you know? Right. Um, so I'm watching like these cold case files that I think those kind of shows and I'm going, man, this would sure be easier if the ghosts would just get up and talk to them and tell them how things happen. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so this idea came to me, um, the, well, the Lazarus project. And what it's about is a homicide detective is recruited into a classified FBI division called Spectre. And it is a group of scientists and investigators who've created a machine called the Lazarus machine. And what they do is they can go to homicide crime scene, utilizing the energy of that intense scene and try to recreate maybe what happened uh, by raising the spirits of those who died. Wow. And I thought, wow, you know, I'm going to run with that. And it turned into a really fun book to write. Fascinating. Oh, you, you, okay. Now you hit on something that uh, you explained the inspiration, which is really cool because I'd ask a lot of writers, you know, what was the inspiration for this? And they, 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 they really can't tell me. And I love the fact that you were able to tell us what it was that, that triggered that. But what I'm curious now is, I mean, you've given uh, some, you know, basics uh, of the plot, um, the development of it. I mean, obviously, you had to kind of think about um, how this how this story was going to take shape. I mean, what kind of a process did you go through so that you then started to have this uh, this this framework of a story? Well, I always start with um, if I have an, an, an idea, what I call the premise. Like every story will have a premise, which is what I basically basically told you the basic plot. But without a pre- you know, rest of the story, you're right, it's just a premise. And so before I even start writing that book, I need to know how it ends. Um, that's just me. Not every writer does that. But I have started enough books in my time that if I didn't know how it ended, I never finished it because I didn't know where it was going. So as long as I know if I can have the beginning and I can have the end, then I know how the middle can go. And the middle just, they come to me. And, and the characters, I don't start the, writing the book until I know, that, I know the characters inside and out. Okay. And a good character, in my opinion, is one that I can tell you everything about her background, her childhood, her likes, her dislikes, even if I don't tell you that in the book. It, because it will come out as a more well-rounded person. Right. Um, even if you don't know what her favorite song is. But I know what her favorite song is. Well, it informs... It, that, is. Yeah, it informs what she says and the way she says things and what she does and the way she does things. So, yeah. Well, now you've forced me. I was going to ask this question later. <laughs> it, 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 his it's his favorite it, this question. This is my favorite question, and I think I know where this is going to go, but I'm going to ask it anyway, especially given the fact that these characters are so well formed before you actually start writing the story. How alive are are they, and do they talk to you? Well, that is a very good question. Um, do they talk to me? Maybe a little bit. They talk to me more through their actions, but they do have a mind of their own. Um, every one of my books, a character has done something that surprised even me. Thank you. <laughs> and every time I tell this story, I'm reminded of Angel Blade, and I always go back to Angel Blade, so anybody who's read that, and I want to just put a spoiler alert, alert right here, but, you know, you having read this book, right? at the very end, you know, I had, I had four books, but I didn't have four books in mind when I first wrote it. And at the very end of Angel Blade, my whole plan was that Jason was going to die at the end. It was going to die because he was possessed by the demon. And that's how she was going to finish him. And then all of a sudden, she decides to save him, unbeknownst to me. And then thus was born the other four, the other three books. So wow, yeah. I'm glad I didn't kill them because it really shaped how the books went. And I'm really glad how they turned out because yeah. of that. 
Exactly. And you just answered my next question. Have they pulled a surprise on you that forced you to change, completely change direction? Well, there we are, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Absolutely. Even, even this book I've, I've, I'm writing now, The Spectre uh, Lazarus Project, uh, yeah, even the ending surprised me. There was something that happened even at the end that I hadn't planned. But I'm writing it, and I was like, oh, that's what's going to happen. And I didn't even know that. And you, All right, I and, like it. And you had an ending already <laughs> figured out, and now you're modifying it at best correct uh-huh. cool fascinating I mean, that, that's interesting and, how uh, yeah it, it surprised even me and you know you never know how a lot of these books are going to be taken right. and perceived um i have a group of beta readers that tend to read a lot of my stuff before i put it out there so that i can help modify scenes and modify characters actions and things like that just to make it more more readable <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, the feedback I get from this book is of all the books I've written so far. This is their favorite one. Oh, cool! But I would go. Nice. Yeah, I'll go so far as to. I mean, I think this is a really great thing, though. You know uh, that you have your characters that are so well f- uh, informed, and that there is just enough flexibility so that they can take the story in a different direction. Because now the story is alive. And and I think yes. by making it alive, now you've created uh, something for the reader right. to be completely mm-hmm. e- emotionally and intellectually invested in, as opposed to just reading something that's you know j- just words on a page. I mean, I can tell the difference when I'm reading a, a, an author's work if if these characters are very much alive and the world is real and and breathing. As opposed to somebody who's just, you know, they're just writing, you know, nonsense down. And, you know, I, I can I can tell the difference. So it, it, I think it's a really great thing that you can have, um, th- that you can write a book that that breathes yeah. and, and has life to it, which is uh, apparently what uh, the Lazarus Project has. And I think that's also sort of ironic, considering the plot. Exactly. <laughs> Well, we I have. It's mostly about the bed. Yeah. Yeah. We have. <laughs> and I agree uh, with you. I mean, I, I, you can tell. You can tell when characters and plots are just one dimensional. And if if I can if I can at least write something that you care about and people that you care about, even the villains that you care about, it will mean so much more in the end. Mm-hmm. Right. And it can even keep going. I've, I've started writing the second book in the Spectre series. And it's just, it feels like this could go on for probably several books oh, cool. um, in the future, I'm hoping. Yeah, it, it's interesting, like you said, when the the characters and the everything, the world comes alive. We were talking to one author, and she was saying that um, she was on vacation with her family, and she oh, said... Yes. She says, oh, my gosh, we have to stop at this little town because there's this diner in this town that the food is just so wonderful and it's some, something like the milkshakes are, are blah, blah, blah or whatever. And then she she finally realized, oh, my God, that was in one of my books. It doesn't really exist. It doesn't exist. <laughs> but it was so alive to oh, her. Yeah. Exactly. That, it, I mean, it... it, it that it, happened to me, actually, um, in, my, in my book, The Key, the Outlaw, and the Treasure, the, the young adult Western. Um, I created the, the, the antagonist in that one I created. His name is Diamond Dave Thibodeau. And he is kind of an amalgam of a whole bunch of famous Western outlaws, like Jesse James and Billy the Kid. But he's a fictional character. I totally created him. And I had some people reading it that said, oh, my gosh, you know, I never even heard of this outlaw. Where did he come from? Who is he? I've never, I need to find more about him. I'm like, uh, well, I made him up. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he he was so real. <laughs> but, yeah. again, I, I... felt so real to some people. Yeah, right. but, but I think that, that's a that's credit a to test- your writing. Exactly, a testament to your writing. You know, and that you allow. Well, I, I did. I took it as a, as a really a, 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 it was welcome a welcome praise that they didn't realize they were passing down. So. Exactly. Yeah, because uh, we, 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 one of our closest friends is author Jeannie Koch, and she always believes that if the characters don't come alive in your mind, and if they actually don't speak to you on some level, then something's wrong. Yeah. And, and I tend oh, to yeah. I tend to agree with her because for this very reason, by by writing characters that ha- that are so 
three dimensional. Well, the, actually, I, it's, it's more like the your characters are four dimensional because they exist in time. Oh, definitely. And yeah, that they're, they're right there with you. Precisely. Exactly. Yeah. That that's that's what makes for a really interesting book, in my opinion. So have yeah. you got have you gotten? And I and I know too that I feel that I can. I know those characters so well when I'm towards the end of those books and I'm finishing them. And if they make me cry, then I know I did the right thing. Right, right. So have you gotten stuck? Because that in- happened to me at the last book, uh, the Angel Blade series and Harbingers, when I finished the last paragraph of that one, I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy with them. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the same with the key, the outlaw, and the treasure, just the way I ended that one. It just, it, they made me tear up and I was like, oh my gosh, I love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you you develop a relationship with those characters, and you have to say goodbye to them Definitely. at least for the moment. Yeah, yeah, I mean they're they're living rent free in your brain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I I think I know the question that Keith was going to ask. But have you ever like gotten stuck at a point? Is that where the question you were going to go? Yeah, with Keith? and then then you realize that the character was wanting you to do something and you were unwilling to do that. And then when you finally gave in, oh, it, yeah. it, the f- oh, story definitely. began to flow again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So what happens, you know, I, writer's block is, it, I think I don't, I don't like saying this necessarily, but writer's block isn't a real thing. It's just in our heads. Um, and so one way I've kind of like got around that. So if they the characters are trying to lead me somewhere and I feel like I'm stuck and I don't want to write something because it's not, it doesn't flow right to me. I will, I will stop on that page and I'll say, I'll type something is going to happen here and I'll just keep going. And then by the time I finish the whole manuscript and I come back, I figured out what that character is going to do. I figured out what's going to happen in that place. And so I still end that page with that extra scene. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That way, I feel like I don't ever get writer's block. I just keep going until it, until it eventually comes to me. It's it's writer's detour. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. It's a detour. I'm still going. I'm just not going in the linear fashion I thought it was. Right. Exactly. So how many uh, books in this particular... I, I assume there's going to be more than one based on our uh, conversation so far. There's going to be more to this particular story then. Yes? Well, oh, there, there will definitely be more books. Um, the the second one I'm writing now, and, and it's going to be... I already know the name. I'm going to be calling it Spectre, the Devil's Playground. Um, I have the whole plot. I've already started it, and I'm about a third of the way through it. Um, I... I don't know what I'm writing anything. If I, if there's going to be a series, usually I don't know when I'm writing it. However, with the first Spectre, I knew that there will be more books after that. Right. How many? I don't know. This is a kind of, it's a kind of series that I think could go on for a while. It could, it has the potential of being not a saga like Angel Blade was, because that was a very defined right. story, very right. defined amount of time. This one I could see going on as a kind of a long-term series potentially. Yeah, well, it's like it's just it's a whole it's series a, of cases. That well, yeah, I'm gonna say it, yeah. it's a procedural. It, it's it's like a whole series. It is. It, it's like CSI. It is exactly what it is. Yeah, with each episode yeah, or each it book like being its own episode. Meets Ghostbusters meets the X Files. Right. If you think of it like a procedural <laughs> paranormal show, yeah. Then yeah, it'd be kind of like that. Cool. So we're running against the clock. Um, so, which is sad because this is really a fantastic conversation we're having here. We're uh, already running out of time. I know it goes so <laughs> fast, doesn't it? It always does. It always does. But wow, <laughs> this this has been a great conversation, Carrie. So I'll just oh, I'll, so much fun talking to you guys. I know. We can't wait till we can actually you know all be in a room together and we can talk to each other face to face. Exactly. Until then, first. Where can people find The Lazarus Project? Uh, the Lazarus Project, it's still um, pending. We don't have a release date yet. They just released the cover. But it could be found. You can find information or even per- potential pre-orders on Christopher Matthews' website, Christopher Matthews Publishing. Um, it will eventually be available through there. It will be available through Amazon. Um, I have a website, terrymerrill.com. It will have links to Christopher Matthews Publishing through there as well. 
So as soon as I have a release date, I will announce it. Um, the best I can do is hopefully, I'm thinking probably fall, early winter this year. Cool. cool. And and any social media presence for you so that people can like follow all of your writing activities? Absolutely. I'm on Facebook, Carrie Merrill Author. And on Instagram, I am Dr. Evil Stork. <laughs> 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 all right do you have a, a twitter or anything that you're um twitter not as much i do have a twitter handle but i don't update it as much as i should so i usually don't pass it out because i really suck at updating my twitter <laughs> okay well this has really been absolutely wonderful and and i do have to say your mother was absolutely devi- delightful when we met her say hello to her for us Oh, I will. And thank you for being on their show. Yeah. Well, thank you for being on the show this time. This this has been great. Oh, of course. Of course. Anytime. I love talking to you guys. Hi, this is Joe Spector from Arizona Opera, and you're listening to The Two Gay Geeks. That was... It, it just... That interview it just flew. flew by. It, it really mean, it did. Just, we were all astonished at how quickly 20 minutes yeah, went and, by. And we chatted with her a little bit before and just kind of doing some catch up. So it was, and it, it was a lot of fun. The conversation was just so fascinating. The yes. things that she's, you know, about how she writes, the turns her, uh, that the book has taken, you know, past books as well. Yep. It was fabulous. Yep. And here's a few selected birthdays for July 5th. Through July 11th, July, what was that? All about? July? July. <laughs> July 11th, 2021. July 5th, Huey Lewis. Love uh, him. Musician, uh, Power of Love, Hip to Be Square. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. All those things back in the, the late 80s and er, early, mid to late 80s. And yeah, I don't know if he actually became a big, you know, if Hugh Lewis and the News became a big international powerhouse, but growing up in San Francisco where he was, he and the News were from, man, they were, they dominated the Bay Area. Yep. And then we have Megan Rapinoe, American soccer player, out and a very outspoken lesbian woman who is a, a, a wonderful athlete in herself. And Ronald D. Moore, producer, writer, Next Gen, DS9, Voyager, Battlestar Galactica, uh, just to name yeah, a few. Yeah, oh, just name a few. <laughs> I mean, he, he, there were others that he had worked on. I remember there was a CBS sci-fi series that he was doing about potential invasion, alien invasion, which only lasted one year at best. And I was sorry to see that yeah. one. I think that was his. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall. I just picked out the big ones. Uh, July 6th, Frida Kahlo, Adore painter, her. feminist, associated with De- Diego Riz- Rivera, and was li- widely accepted as sexually fluid, uh, and just a wonderful, wonderful painter and her artist. Her work is oh my gorgeous. Gosh. And, and, and a, a, a um, colorful person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> in in addition to her art. <laughs> and then we have uh, the Dalai Lama, Tenzin Gyatso. He's the 14th Dalai Lama, exiled leader of Tibet, currently living in Dharamsala, India. And then we have Janet Lee, actress. Psycho. M- Psycho, mother of Jamie Lee Curtis. And Merv Griffin, television producer, writer, creator. Uh, I remember one time watching The Wheel of Fortune and... Uh, there was one contestant that hit the, like the the hundred thousand dollar thing right. three times. Oh my goodness! And Pat Sajak says, uh, "We're going to go to commercial break now while we give Merv some oxygen." <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because Merv Griffin produced a lot of those game shows. Yes, exactly. I did, that was hilarious. <laughs> then we have Burt Ward, actor, most famous. Uh, as Robin or slash Dick Grayson who in did Batman, a, Batman 66. Who very, very briefly reprieved his role or rep- no, rep- reprised. Reprieved? <laughs> reprieved, yeah. No, he's gotten reprieved. Reprised his, his role in um, The Flash. Hmm. Uh, last season, I want to say oh, it was. Cool. And we saw him with Adam West and Julie Newmar. Oh, my uh, that, God. Uh, that, that panel is, is still one of the best I've ever seen. I, it is. I mean, we talk about it all the time. <laughs> Every time Adam West's name comes up and Julie Newmar's birthday comes up, it was such that a was, wonderful, it, it was, wonderful It was fantastic. Panel. 
to see the three of them. Yes. Yep. Then we have Mark Chagall, artist of of a number of mediums, painters, prints, stage sets, stained glass, tapestries. Oh, my gosh. His art was... um, and, and it spanned different styles as well. I mean, uh, there were some, some of his stuff was very cubist, and then some of it is uh, very modern. And the Met has two huge mur- murals in the lobby. Mm. And he did the costumes for the Rite of Spring. And uh, our friends Brennan and Gordon have a couple of Chagall prints. That's right. That uh, they picked up at various uh, fundraisers for. Uh, several different things and it, I, I love his art it's wonderful and Jeffrey Rush actor Australian love him numerous roles uh, most famously Barbosa in Pirates of the Caribbean films I love him in The King's Speech yes that's wonderful and he did voice work for Pixar mm-hmm. guy's fantastic yep and then we have Pat Paulson, a babysitter. My old babysitter. <laughs> Actually, well, babysitter's the wrong word. He ran a daycare center. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's what it really is. He ran a daycare center. He was famous c- for running a daycare center. He ran a daycare center with his oh, wife. Oh, and he also ran for president, too. So. Well, <laughs> but that was all after he became a writer for the Smothers Brothers. Mm-hmm. And then we have uh, Facebook friend, a friend, Trent Zombie Slayer. Did you say Facebook friend? Uh, Facebook friend, yes. Yeah, okay. Trend the Zombie Slayer. <laughs> Trend the Zombie Slayer. <laughs> yes. Facebook friend, Trent the Zombie Slayer. Oh, Trent the Zombie Slayer. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Moving on. <laughs> and uh, uh, one of my oldest friends, Bill Hensley. Uh, Happy birthday, Bill. July 7th, Ringo Starr, one of the Beatles. One of the Beatles. 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 Yes. And How you doing, my love? Yes. And I, I would I would hope that he's going to go on tour again. I hope I so, too. It. That show Ringo was Starr so his, good. What, what the All-Star Band. All-Star Band, yeah. That was one oh of my the gosh. best concerts I've ever it attended. It really was. I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, my gosh, the... The talent that he had with that, him. That was the whole point. Yep. And then Billy Campbell, actor, Rocketeer, 30 years ago on yeah. June 21st was when it was released. And then Jake Whitehall, actor, Witchfinder okay. Private Pulsifer. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Yes, and we'll talk about that a little okay, bit. Okay, <laughs> I see where this is going. <laughs> and then we have Robert A. Heinlein, author, one of the Holy, Holy Trinity. Trinity. Yes, yeah. and you were talking about Asimov earlier. Yeah, and Clark, and Clark and is the other one. Yeah, those three in my mind are the Holy Trinity of yep. sci-fi writers. Uh, 32 novels and 59 short stories and like 16 collections. Yeah. Wow. And and not all of them were sci-fi either. I mean, That's it, true. A lot of them were several different yeah, genres. Yeah, he did. But he he's the one that really was hard sci-fi, you know. It, it, it really required a, a heck of a lot of thought, and he turned the um, he brought into popular culture the idea of grok. That was from Stranger in a Strange Land, and you started seeing things like I grok Spock. It's 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 something that the Martians uh, were able to do. It's it's hard to explain, except you need to read that book. <laughs> yeah. And then David McCullough, author, historian, his John Adams oh, yes. biography is just incredible. That is one of the best biographies I've yep. ever read. Yep. And then Giancarlo Minotti, composer, an out gay man, partner of Samuel Barber. Most popular work was Amal and the Night Visitors, oh, which yes. we watched at, at Christmas. That was interesting. It was very interesting. It was uh, actually the the concept was inspired by Hieron- Hieronymus Bosch's Adoration of the Magi. Ah. Uh, and he also used some of uh, the Italian uh, Christmas themes mm-hmm. in uh, Amal. It was a very interesting piece. Quite. I, w- I would like to see it updated you know, with modern singers. Yeah, and, I'm surprised uh, we modern, haven't found that. Yeah. It would it'd be in, much in, more interesting because sometimes the older pieces that we've seen, the the audio suffers. Although the one we saw was not bad. Yeah. I thought it held up rather well, but yeah. it still deserves a, a modern update. Exactly. And then we have John Pertwee, actor, the third doctor. Arguably my favorite doctor. Yeah, I'm. 
He, uh, he's right it's, up there with Tom well, Baker. Well, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, Pertwee, yeah. I, they're, they're, I mean, I, oh my goodness. I mean, I know. Pertwee, Baker, Davison. Those three are my absolute favorites. Yep. But I think Pertwee kind of ekes out on top on that one. Yeah. And then we have Akiva Goldsman, producer, writer. He uh, was co-producer on Fringe and writer and creator. Uh and producer on Discovery, yes, and the Star Trek short treks, and what he's been Picard doing, yeah, what he's been doing for the Star Trek New World, yeah, <laughs> everything he's been doing. Well, you know, I'm not a big fan of Lower Decks, but that's that's not necessarily his fault. Yeah, what he's been doing for Discovery and Picard, I think, is terribly exciting. And he has a little thing in production right now. Strange New Worlds? No. No? Oh, what is it? Yeah. Ring World. <gasps> He's doing Ring World? He's executive producer on that. Oh, yes. my God. I wonder what yeah. the status on that is. That is one of it Larry in, Niven's seminal works. Yeah, I think it said pre-production, actually. Wow. I would so. really love to see that. Yep. And then we have Simone Beck. Uh, author and chef, along with Julia Child, uh, published Mastering the Art of French Cooking, mm -hmm. number one and number two. She was uh, a fast friend of Julia Child in France, and they put together the the school and yeah. then also the books. Okay, now we need to watch Julia and Julia. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> July 8th, Kevin Bacon. Oh, my gosh. The one that everybody has got some sort of a, a, an association with on some level. Exactly. Five degrees separation from Kevin Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't be surprised if actually there is five degrees to Kevin Bacon, you know, with us collectively. Yeah. I'm sure some, there is. Somewhere, yeah. It just needs a little bit of work, but I'm sure we can find it. Exactly. Uh, we'll figure it out and uh, report back to you. Yeah. Uh, before the sun burns out, <laughs> if we remember. Right. <laughs> Wolfgang Pock. Oh, my. Uh, chef and uh, a celebrity chef, I suppose. With a very dirty <laughs> mouth. Well, he just, he was, he just said the word shitty. <gasps> well, there it is. Okay, people, thank you very much. <laughs> On Beth and Bill. He said it morning. several times. <laughs> he said it several times, and Beth was just apoplectic. You can't say that on the radio. <laughs> I love it. We were both listening, and I know we said this every time we bring this up. I was at work in my in my office somewhere, and Keith was he was across town. He we're both listening to this thing live, dying with laughter. It was yeah. one of the funniest episodes of Beth and Beth and Bill uh, here in Phoenix I've ever heard. It certainly was. And then we have Steve Lawrence, singer, actor, uh, did all kinds of stuff. And a Facebook friend, Trampus White. Trampus, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Trampus. And Jane Carney. Um, actually, she's a fa <clears throat> excuse me, former uh, co-worker of mine. And they actually live just across town from each other. It's amazing. <laughs> How about that? Uh, not related or, or know each other even. So, and then July 9th, Tom Hanks, actor, Mr. I've Done Everything. Pretty much. Did you know that he attended Chabot College? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did know that. In fact, I was uh, at Chabot College when he came back and did a college production of a comedic play called Charlie's Aunt. And he did it in drag. And it... Well, because the it, it is a drag role, ah. and it was hilariously funny. This was around the time he was doing Bosom Buddies. Ah, okay. And then he's a big Doctor Who fan as well. Yes, he is. Yep. And he's also related to Walt Disney. Yes, uh, like fifth cousin, something five like times that, removed or and something like that, and he's got a connection to, to Mister Rogers. Yeah, he's uh, another. He's a a descendant or a. A cousin or some damn something. I don't know if it's through marriage or if it's through blood. If it's yeah. through blood, then, you know, that that's fascinating because that means that Fred Rogers and Walt Disney are related. Yeah. And then Jimmy Smith's actor, NYPD Blue, West Wing, Star Wars, it was Bail Organa. Yeah. And it was cool that he got to do, um, you know, get, get the pop culture with the Star Wars stuff. But, yeah. you know... I developed a whole new love for him in West Wing. Exactly. He, he really was great. That, that. Uh, yeah, he yep. was fantastic. And then we have Barbara Cartland. She was an English novelist, one of the best-selling uh, authors of all time. 723 novels. Get out. She died when she was 98. Pro probably with pen in hand <laughs> as she was writing her yeah. last book. Yeah, and she also became a prominent London society figure 
who presented herself in pink chiffon gown, plumed hat, blonde wig, and heavy makeup because you she should. could see her. I can imagine. Oh my God. But she could get away with it. <laughs> exactly. July 10th, Wyatt Russell, actor, son of Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Right. He played uh, the semi-new Captain America in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes, he, he did. He turned out to be a villain, but, I mean, I thought he did a great job. He did a very, very good job in the part, you know, and, yeah, I. it's sad that he actually did, in real life, receive death threats. Yeah. Uh, which is a shame, because I thought it was... People should always be able to distinguish the difference between actor and character. Mm -hmm. And I thought he did a magnificent part. Mm -hmm. And there was a bit of a redemption of his character at the end. And I am very excited to see where his character will be going uh, in the future of the cinematic universe. Yep. And then we have Nikola Tesla. Where am I? Inventor, best known for his work in designing modern alternating uh, current mm -hmm. and a partner with Westinghouse. Yes. And Arthur Ashe, tennis player, man of color. He contracted HIV from a blood transfusion during a bypass surgery oh, uh, tragic. after his heart attack and was an AIDS activist uh, who formed a, a foundation to fight AIDS and who educate folks about uh, HIV and AIDS. Arlo Guthrie, singer, actor. Oh, Alice's son. Restaurant. Yep. Son of legendary uh, Woody Guthrie, famous for Alice's Restaurant. And if I remember right, I read. I think I read something that he was supposed to make a farewell tour last year, but obviously, obviously the, that didn't happen. The great pause happened. If uh, he does decide to do that at some point in the future, I would, would love to see it. It would be worth going to see. Because yes. you know that he's going to close. The, I mean, well, his encore will be Alice's Restaurant. Yep. And Carl Orff, <gasps> composer, music educator, yes. famous for Carmen Burana. I think that's probably the, the big thing that he's known yep. for. And Fiona Shaw, actress, famous for Aunt Petunia. I, she's really Potter. awesome. Yep. And Facebook friend Alan Malpas. He was uh, one of the dancers in uh, Finding um, Adonis. Ah. Yep. July 11th, Robert the Bruce, King of the Scots. Born 1274 and died in 1329. Uh, among many, many other things, the uh, first Scottish War of Independence fought to have Scotland recognized as an independent country, and Scotland has always fought for that. Yes. And is currently fighting for Still that. Still fighting for that, yeah. <laughs> Still and always. And then we have E.B. White, author, Charlotte's Web, Stuart mm -hmm. Little, and the English Style Guide called Elements of Style. And a copy of it sitting right here on my desk. And Tab Hunter. Hubba, actor, hubba, hubba. Out gay man, damn Yankees, a teen heartthrob. Oh, my gosh. He's gorgeous. Just a beautiful man. And he, he passed away just not long ago. Yep. And really sad. 2019, I think. Yeah. Frank Rosenblatt. He was a psychologist who also worked in computer technology in the 50s and helped to design the first Perceptron, which was a computer machine that could learn. It, it simulated the, the brain's neural network and could learn. And they, they rolled that out in 1960, I think. They worked from 1952 to 1960. And we don't have, our, and we're still waiting for our robot overlords. Actually, <laughs> exactly. I take that back. We have our robot overlords. They're called Siri and Google. Exactly. And Alexa. And Alexa, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Eric Owens, opera singer. What a voice. Oh, what a voice. What a talent. What a talent, yeah. <laughs> he, I love Eric. He was wonderful. Well, he's in probably, the ring. yeah, I was going to say. He was wonderful in. Um, Oh, Porgy, Porgy and Bess. Bess. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. that um, we've seen various productions of uh, The Ring, and I would say he's, without question, in my mind, the best Albrecht I've ever heard. Yep. And that's it for the birthdays this time. Technorama, the podcast for geeks, because geeks are better than cool. You don't hear someone say, get away from me, you cool person. Who's going to have their 65-inch home theater system installed by the cool squad? Not me, that's for sure. 
How much cool cred do you have? Not enough to care about. Think you'll find any canned unicorn meat at thinkcool.com? It's just a part domain name. They don't even have roadkill in a paper cup. That's why you need to start listening to Technorama, because that's what geeks do. Go to chuckchat.com and listen to Technorama before you turn cool. Go give it a listen and visit our friends Chuck and Craig over at Technorama Podcast. I'm Daniel Ratcliffe, and I believe that reaching out for help is the bravest thing a person can do. If you are struggling and need support, call the Trevor Lifeline at one 866 488 7386. It's free and confidential and trained counsellors are there to listen 24-7 without judgment. To learn more about the Trevor Project's life-saving work for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender or questioning young people, go to thetrevorproject.org. We want to give a shout out, as always, to the Joshua Tree Feeding Program, a 501c3 nonprofit food pantry for the HIV and AIDS community in Maricopa and Pinal counties. They set it up like a store. It's a, a food distribution, and they do that on Wednesdays. Uh, set it up like a store so that the clients can choose the food that they want so nothing goes to waste. They also have a second um distribution on Wednesday evening for the not gender non-conforming community, regardless of HIV or V status. Uh, if you are gender non-conforming community and you're struggling with uh, food insecurity, please check out Joshua Tree. And they could certainly use your help right now. So if you want to go to jtfp.org, you can make a, a donation there. And it's time for our feedback and each of these items or uh, each of these comments that came from. Oh, God, let me start that part again. I know each of the articles <laughs> that generated this feedback will be featured in the show notes for this episode number 333 at tggeeks.com. Jeez, I don't know. Maybe I'm having a sugar high. Starting off, regarding TG Geeks episode number 330, got a comment from Kathy Marie Falkenberry. It was her birthday. She says, thank you for remembering my birthday. Yay. And we also got a comment from Jeff Marriott, who we interviewed in that episode. He says, I'm not really a podcast guy. I've listened to maybe 15, 20 podcasts in my life. Most of those from pal Michael Connolly books. But I was glad to be asked to participate in this one. And Keith Lynn and Ben Raginson made it lots of fun. Give a listen. Hey, thank you. It was great. Yes. Yeah. Moving on, regarding Andrew's angle, Rita Moreno is just a girl who decides to go for it. That's the name of the movie. Is legendary. And got a comment from Hamish Down. He says, I have to admit that I only recently realized that the grandmother in One Day at a Time was the same actress as the Oscar-winning performance in West Side Story. Well, we all learn something new every day. Exactly. Moving on, regarding Hamish Downey's five questions with Tina de Bellegarde got... Uh, first, a comment from Hamish saying, this interview was a long time in the making. I'm glad I can finally share it with everyone. And then it got this from Tina DeBellegarde. She says, thanks to Hamish Downey for a wonderful interview. Terrific questions that helped me learn more about my own writing. Oh, cool. Very interesting. And moving on. <laughs> regarding Andrea's angle, the hitman's wife's bodyguard. Oh, my Lord. Fantastically funny. <laughs> got a comment from Corey Lynn Nelson. One of our oldest friends, she says, what an encouraging review of the hitman's wife's bodyguard. Sequels can always be a risk, even with top-notch talent. Looks like I found a great reason to start a return to the movie theater in person again. Yes, that, that was our foray back into the theater seeing yes, that movie. And it was It was really, scream. the movie is nuts. <laughs> and then we close out, this was just a general comment that came completely unconnected to anything that we had done. It was totally unsolicited. We got this from Cat Forrest, who acted in the uh, indie comedy horror uh, film Things We Dig uh, by yep. Pia Thrasher. And she just left this on Instagram by and saying, you guys are the bomb. Oh, well, thanks, Cat. Thank you very much. 
And go ahead. I was going to say, oh, that's our feedback for today. Yeah. If you want to leave a, a comment or say anything about anything we publish, whether it be on our episodes or it be on any of the articles that we publish, such as the reviews, Hamish's uh, various things that he's doing for us, thank you, Hamish, or anything, you can do that. You can go to tggeeks.com and you can leave a comment directly on the article or episode there. You can comment on our Facebook page on anything and everything that we publish goes out there, as well as to Instagram and Twitter. We also have a listener feedback line. If you want to call and leave a voicemail message, we'll play that on air. You can call 469 TG Geeks. That is 469 844 3357. And as always, please, please play, play nice. Well, as everybody knows, we are huge supporters of independent creators, whether it's filmmaker, comic book artists, art, artists, artists, what are writers? What is it I'm talking about now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> is this becoming the wildest episode in the wilderness? <laughs> it's the wildest episode in the wilderness. <laughs> Hold on to your hats and glasses, folks. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, we just went off the track. <laughs> anyway... Independent what was I creators. saying? <laughs> yes, where was I? <laughs> Independent creators, please check out their uh, websites, their Facebook pages, their Instagram, their Twitter, their Etsy pages, wh wherever you find independent creators. Talk about their stuff. Talk to other people about this stuff. Talk to them. And more importantly, buy their stuff. Mm -hmm. Please consider supporting independent creators creators and starting uh july 1st which was last uh thursday we are in the people's choice podcast awards we're in the lgbtq category please go to podcastawards.com and you'll need to sign up and give them your email address and you'll have to verify it it the site is a little wonky in that it says nominate in one place and vote in another. It's just the way it is. Just deal with it. Katie Edwards <laughs> voted, yeah. and he said it's actually yes. not not that difficult. It's not that difficult. It just is confusing, the way the, the terminology. Scroll down to the LGBTQ category and find TG Geek's webcast. There are other categories. If you're a podcast listener, we would be ever so grateful if you would vote for us in the podcast awards. Thank you very much. If you are trans or are questioning your gender identity, and if you are in crisis or are feeling isolated and need someone to talk to, or you know of someone in a similar situation, there is a special hotline just for you. The hotline is provided by translifeline.org and staffed by trained counselors who are transgender themselves. The hotline in the U.S. is 877 Five six five eight eight six zero. In Canada, it is eight seven seven three three zero six three six six. Or you can go to translifeline.org to learn about the important work they are doing. Please reach out for help. You are not alone. Yeah, baby. They're like two gay geeks. They're together, you know. They're two gay guys and they're geeks. Is that okay? So now I know what the second segment is about. <laughs> Something we saw last week that just oh, completely blew our Lord. minds. Good Omens with Michael Sheen and David Tennant. Holy moly. Now, granted, what? this has been out for a while. We are late to the party, admittedly. Oh. But what got my attention on this, and I, I've been intending to watch this for some time, but when I saw the announcement a few days back that it got uh, the green light for a season two, it... It then became imperative that we watch all of season one. Oh, my God. What a crazy, crazy thing. Yeah, well, when you consider <laughs> who's responsible for that craziness, exactly. it then makes complete sense. I loved it, though. It was so warped. It's very British. Very British. And it, it just, it's just warped. <laughs> well, Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, what do you want? Exactly. You know, and... and uh, <laughs> 
I mean, even if Neil Gaiman alone had had any part of that, it would have been bizarre. And which lot, it is. A lot of people make a lot of cameos in that in it too. So yeah, it's true. And it's just a great. Uh, it's just. A, has a a great feel about it. It does. It takes very um, almost orthodox uh, religious ideas and totally turns them upside down, which exactly. I wholeheartedly applaud. And there are so many little Easter eggs for all kinds of different things yeah. in the thing all over the place. It's, it's, it's always just, taking these little side yeah. steps that and it's, are very bizarre. Self-referential. Yeah. It's irreverent. Extremely, oh it's just if you have an opportunity, check out Good Omens. It, You'll you will not it, be sorry. It's on Amazon Prime, <laughs> yep. and it's it's such a delight to watch. You will enjoy it, hopefully. <laughs> And it's time for our weekly review. These are the items that we ran on our website at tggeeks.com. And the links for each of these news items will be in the show notes for this episode, number 333 at tggeeks.com. And holy moly, did we have a busy week. Yes. Starting with Sunday, June 27th, Nerdy Chupacabras, number 54 from Tommy Cannon. On Monday the 28th, TG Geeks episode number 332. On Tuesday the 29th, Ben's Breakdown, Loki Season 1, Three Episode Thoughts. On Wednesday the 30th, Ben's Gay Breakdown, Love Victor Season 2, Ending Thoughts, as well as Aaron's Arcade, Nuclear Power Number 3, A Review. On Thursday, July 1st, Andrea Zangle, I Carry You With Me, Emotional and Innovative. Also, we ran the article, Vote for TG Geeks Webcast at PodcastAwards.com. On Friday, July 2nd, Andrea Zangle, The Tomorrow War, Engaging and Smart. That's encouraging. Also, Hamish Downey has five more questions for Shauna Corsani. And then we close off the week, Saturday, July 3rd, Hamish Downey developing new animated film. Hmm. <laughs> Have some shout-outs that we need to make. First to the Arkle Times Post-Dispatch News for republishing some of our content from time to time. Put out by the human Arkle, Brian Weber. He's a great longtime friend and ally of the show. You can find the Post-Dispatch News by finding him on Twitter. Search for Arkle, at A-R-K-L-E. And while you're searching for all things Arkle, go to YouTube. Uh, he's got his Arkle Studios there, so it's youtube.com slash Arkle Studios. And boy, is he busy over there. He has a shameless cash grab series, which is now in season six. His rants versus zombie series. Yes, it is ended, but past episodes are still available to watch. He has his new item, Arkle Tier Ranks, various things, as well as his game videos of Trick and Treat and Star Trek Online. We must also give some shout-outs to a couple of Facebook groups for allowing us to post our episodes and relevant articles on their pages. First two, Gay Geeks After Hours for saying we could share away our stuff there. And their URL is facebook.com slash group slash Gay Geeks After Hours. And then to The Gay Geek for pretty much the same thing. And their URL is facebook.com slash group slash The Gay Geek. And as always, we must give special thanks to their moderator, Jeremiah Reeves. Thank you, Jeremiah. In addition to wherever you found us this time, you can find us on Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, and Amazon Podcasts, as well as where other fine podcasts can be found. Also, check us out on Sci-Fi Radio, formerly Krypton Radio, at 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific Time on Tuesdays. Go ahead and listen to their other content, the 24-hour geeky internet sci-fi radio station. Please rate us and review us on iTunes. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> And that should do it for this episode of TG Geeks Webcast. Be sure to check out the article for this webcast episode. We'll have several links on the page. And remember, we can uh, you we can comment. Yes, we can comment. You can comment on our Facebook page. We can all page. comment. We can all comment. We can comment if we want to. Uh, what? 
Okay. <laughs> or check out our website, tggeeks.com. You can leave us voicemail at 469 TG Geeks. That is 469 844 3357 from TG Squared Studios. I'm Keith Lane. Thanks for listening. Please be kind to yourself and those around you. Stay safe. Stay sane. Peace. Cheers. We're the men without pants. <laughs> Today. <laughs> <laughs>